Tonight, all Ghanaian exporters with consignments stranded at the closed Nigerian Benin border should return home. Deputy Trade Minister Carlos Ahenkwa tells Joy Business that the state of Nigeria has shown no resolve to reopen the border. It's been eight months now since the closure of the border with Ghana's trading community bearing the brunt. Mr. Ahenkwa was speaking on the sidelines of the Agricultural Leadership Conference at PGSA. Charles Aite has more. All Ghanaian exporters with registered trucks stranded at the closed Nigerian Benin border are to return home. Deputy Trade Minister Carlos Ahenkra disclosed to Joy Business that the federal state of Nigeria is not ready to reopen the border. The president of Ghana wants all Ghanaian registered trucks that are seated at the border to come back home. Indeed, he has asked us to go to the border on a couple of occasions. I've been there myself to assess the situation. Meanwhile, president of the Ghana Union of Traders Association, Dr. Joseph Obin, says the said trucks do not belong to Ghanaian traders. According to him, the closure of the border will rather disrupt trade activity in Nigeria. But no um, a, a businessman worth his thought will leave goods out there. The reason is that the goods do not even belong to them any longer. It has been purchased by Nigerians. The closure of the Nigerian Benin border has entered its eighth month, with Ghanaian exporters lamenting the impact it has had on trading activities and profit margins. For instance, beverage firm Casapreco has revealed how the closure has resulted in about a two million CD loss in profits in just about two months. The Nigerian government insists it will reopen the border only if Benin meets all 13 of its trade conditions. Now, as part of moves to penetrate Africa's market, the government of Malta is beginning bilateral relations with Ghana through some key sectors of the economy. At its second Ghana-Malta business forum in Accra, both governments uh, signed five MOUs to undertake initiatives that will see them take advantage of each other's market. Chief Executive of the Ghana Investment Promotion Centre, Yofi Gwan, tells Joy Business that the strategic partnerships will boost Ghana's trade volumes with the EU since Malta has the best economy in the EU. The decision to enter Ghana's aviation industry is part of Malta's efforts at opening up key sectors of its economy to the world. Per the ongoing discussions, Malta will be given the opportunity to venture into airline operations, logistics and transportation in the country's aviation space due to Ghana's strategic business climate in the sub-Saharan Africa region. According to Yofi Grant, both countries will benefit from their deal if it finally goes through. To clearly understand uh, what the business opportunity is, then of course what the regulatory frameworks will be, um, whether it's a fifth rights um, um, airspace rights or, or whether it's actually a, a, a flight that comes to Accra directly and then from Accra goes into the sub region or uses Accra as a transit point. In either ways, whether we can actually have flights go to Malta as a transit point into Europe. So all that is there. But also in, in terms of, um, of business, um, the fact that Malta has opened its first sub-Saharan African embassy or high commission in Accra also tells that they are serious about opening up um, opportunities. So um, issues like visa, etc. can be issued by the Maltese embassy here. On his part, Minister of Economy, Investment and Small Businesses of Malta, Silvio Shembri, believes that Ghana stands out among African countries, hence the decision to use Ghana in entering the African markets. Well, again, this is another common thing we have, we have in common. We are both regional hubs in our respective areas. Malta in North Africa and Europe, especially Southern Europe, Ghana in West Africa. Again, we both need each other. It's a win-win situation here. We can help each other. There's also complementarity at the sectoral level. In many industry sectors, we are non-competing. We actually can help each other. And there are very few countries in which we have this situation. We can help each other. The occasion was used to sign five agreements between selected agencies in Ghana and Malta. So in 2018, there were just a team of four enthusiastic entrepreneurs competing in the Cosmos Innovation Center Agritech Challenge. Two years down the line, they are hosts to this year's cohort on their market research trip. Karin Dodu has more on a trip to the Tech Shelter Hilltop Greenhouse Village. 
Day one of the market research saw participants of the Cosmos Innovation Center Agritech Challenge take a trip to Obusumasi in the eastern region to visit the hilltop greenhouse village. The greenhouse village is managed by Tech Shelter, one of the winning teams from the 2018 edition of the KIC Agritech Challenge. Having operated for about a year, the team has managed to turn around the fortunes of the one third facility. It's very important to have expert advice behind the whole thing. Practical experience. You're not talking because you can speak good English because you can pitch. You're talking because you actually know what you're saying. So if we are still learning. All this with a mobile phone application which is able to provide crop production services. The new cohorts visited the site to learn more about their business and perhaps grow an interest in greenhouse farming. The trip was also to help them come up with business ideas to help tackle challenges associated with greenhouse farming. Due to the highly controlled environment in the domes, the participants were unable to use them as this could be detrimental to the growth of the plants. They, however, got the chance to observe one of Tech Shelter's very own demo kits, which helps to regulate temperature and humidity within the greenhouses. So here it is displaying what it is speaking now. Okay. Right? So that means at any point, anywhere you are, I'm not connected to it, but I'm wirelessly connected. Yeah. At any point in time, anywhere you are, you can see the temperature within your tunnel and also the relative humidity. Temperature drops. At Hilltop, the main aim is to ensure that they provide greenhouse services to maximize crop yield and improve profits for the various owners. Public relations officer for Tech Shelter, Gifty Kwashi, had a word of advice for them. They should take it with all seriousness and identify problems in the system. Fine, people are solving some, but we can't solve it all. We need more hands in the agriculture space, right from production, what, whatsoever across the agriculture value chain, they should identify problems because there are thieving problems in the agriculture sector we need to solve. So um, what I would tell them is that they should really be serious about what um, they want to identify in the agriculture sector and come up with innovative solutions to help us move forward as a country. At the end of the visit, some participants were inspired by the story of Team Tech Shelter. We are all trying to move the agri sector to the next level and yeah, the young guys are doing that. We are also looking up to them to also do that. So I think it's, it's bringing some kind of uh, hope to the young guys that there's something in agriculture in which we have to also go into. So I got to understand that if you really want something to be different from the other, it, uh, you need a design, a proper design, and you need to plan into that design. More than 100 entrepreneurs from all over Ghana uh, took part in the Cosmos Innovation Center Agritech Challenge in January 2020. And to help equip them for the job market, they embarked on a 10-day research tour in six regions in Ghana, visiting factories and companies within the agriculture value chain. Catch all the adventures from their journey in our subsequent bulletins. Enterprise Federation, PEF, is urging government to build capacity of local businesses to Stand, withstand the competition the Africa continental free trade area will provide. According to the CEO of PEF, Nanao Sebonsu, Ghanaian businesses stand to lose more if other countries come with their huge capital. He spoke with Joy Business at the PEF Awards held in Accra to acknowledge efforts of some state and private agencies. Fred Duo was there for Joy Business. According to Chief Executive Officer of a Private Enterprise Federation, Nana Osei Bonsu, the Africa Continental Free Trade Area offers an enormous platform which must not be taken for granted. According to him, Ghana may not be able to stand the competition to emerge out of a free trade area if businesses do not build enough capacity. Now the Continental Free Trade allows anybody to migrate and do anything. So if we look at Ghana and the gaps of what we don't have, Nigerians are going to bring, South Africans are going to bring, Kenyans are going to bring, Cameroonians are going to bring, then where lives the Ghanaian business? So we have to build your capacity to understand the competition that is coming, push them to the level where they become strong enough to withstand any competition. Unless we do that, gradually we're going to lose a lot. We, everybody's glorifying trade, but you can only trade what you produce at the level of competency, at the level of uh, you know, uh, quality control. And if you don't, 
the competition is going to swallow you. And that's what we haven't done. We're talking about the glorified benefits, but we haven't talked about the threats and lamentations that will come if we don't do our homework. But we need to hold the hands of businesses to be able to be compete, become profitable. The key word profitable sometimes is lost on people that, oh, businessmen want to be rich and go home and spend the money. But with that profitability of the business, let me give you the scenario. No employment. The employees' taxes are not paid to government. The business profit taxes are not paid to government. Government revenues are lost. As now, 92% of our businesses are micro, small, and medium enterprises. 92%. Do you know their tax contribution? Four percent. A representative of the Minister for Planning, George Yao Janbafo, stated that the Private Enterprise Federation awards and similar awards go a long way to boost and motivate people in all sectors to offer their best. PEF, particularly for the thought and institutionalization of the public sector institutions excellence awards. This is a novel. We applaud this effort because we believe that we have fought corruption over time, and most of our efforts have been around punitive sanctioning. Our advocacy has been around getting legislations and laws in place to ensure that we are sanctioning the corrupt. Uh, we all agree that that has not gone too well and we also appreciate that it is important that even as we advocate for sanctioning, we also advocate that those who are doing well be recognized as such. One of the awardees shared his perspective on exploits of a private enterprise federation over the years. We want the, you know, good performing department and then the um, practical approach to fighting corruption, yeah, the Department of Factories Inspectorates. And they really mean a lot to us because um, over the years, the factory inspectors has been tagged as corrupt, but we've been able to, you know, uh, put our acts together to reduce or to eliminate corruption that we have been tapped with. Yeah. So we go to the workplace and then we, we now made them aware. We have a checklist that we've given to the occupiers for them to know what we are coming to do. So they've already prepared themselves already. Unlike previously, they don't know what we are coming for. And then an inspector goes there, looks around, and he puts a tag on you and says, no, this one you can't do, you have done this and that. But now they have a checklist. Fred Duho's report for Joy Business. Another story we are following keenly for you, the sale of the assets of international oil company Anadako in Ghana to Total Oil SA may not materialize, at least for now. This is because the Ghana Revenue Authority is refusing to issue a tax clearance certificate to aid the transaction. George Afi has more in the following report. The Ghana Revenue Authority's decision not to issue the tax clearance certificate for this transaction was influenced by an audit which shows that Anadako is supposed to pay some taxes running into $510 million to the tax authorities. These were taxes that was due to the state from operations in the country. Documents cited by Joy Business shows that Anadako is refusing to pay the taxes, putting across several arguments. But the Ghana Revenue Authority in their formal response argues that their assessment was based on provisions captured in the Revenue Act. It shows that Anadako should pay these taxes. Now, this disagreement has forced the Ghana Revenue Authority to freeze the issuance of this certificate and the required documentations to support the sale of their assets. It's critical to make this whole transaction valid or successful for total takeover. Government sources also maintain that although they do not object to which firm Anadako can sell its assets to, they just want to make sure that the right thing is done. We are learning that government is prepared to give its blessings to this deal only if Anadako gets all the required regulatory clearance. Anadako is selling its assets in Ghana and other African countries as part of some restructuring moves and slight change in the ownership of the company. Got an update on this story. Commissioner of Customs at the GRA, Kenel Kojo Damwa, has, says the GRA has agreed with the international oil company Anadako to pay its outstanding tax in full before selling its stake in the Ghibli field to Total SA. 
He was responding to concerns that Anadako's decision to offload the stake will amount to short change in Ghana through loss of tax. Uh, normally when the targets are set, we divide them onto the offices. For the customs division, our major operational center is the Temahabo. Okay. And so they take close to about 70% of the overall target. So we work it out that way, and then uh, we come to Takrade Harbour, then Kotoka International Airport, then Elubo and Aflao. These are the major ones, then the other ones. So we, we know our strengths, we know our weaknesses. Now, with customs, our duties are mainly based on imports. We have very little from export, so mainly from imports. And uh, we try as much as possible to maximize the revenue that comes from these sources. Of course, the revenue depends on the volume of imports, what is coming in. If the volume increases potentially, then your revenue will increase. But there's the possibility of uh, leakages by way of negligence or reckless behavior on the part of some of our officers. Now, with customs, there are two major things that happen. We call them classification and valuation. The item that is coming in, the correct description, we have a code that tells you the identity of the item. So if you get the classification correct, then you can have the value also correct. So if you make a mistake in the classification or you manipulate the classification in a manner that will not help you to get the correct values, then potentially you will be losing. So we have trained our officers. There are some of the officers who are very knowledgeable uh, in certain commodities. Uh, in fact, we've already done some assessments for Anadako. We've come to a certain understanding, and they are going to make some payments, even including capital gains, the gains that they are making on the transfer. So certainly, every taxable duty that has to be paid will be paid, and we will make sure we collect it. Well, we've got uh, bits of information that would interest you on the Jubilee field and the stakes held by Anna Darko. If we can, uh, we can follow that information for you uh, right now. So we know that uh, the Jubilee field was discovered uh, in June 2007 between the Deep Water Tunnel and the West Cape Three Points blocks in Ghana. The field's recoverable reserves are estimated to be more than uh, 370 million barrels with an upside potential of uh, 1.8 billion barrels. It is located at water depth of 1,100 uh, meters. Now, let's take a look at the equity partners of the deep water Tano block. Talo with 49.95%, Cosmos with 18%, and Adako with 18%. Sabri Oil and Gas with 4.05% and the Ghana National Petroleum Corporation with 10%. Now, here's some information about the Jubilee unit area. The Talo is the operator. It's got 35.48%, Cosmos 24.08%, and Adako 24.08%, DMPC 13.64%, and Petro SA 2.73%. And that's uh, some bit of information for you. That's Business Live tonight. Thanks for watching. My name is Daryl Crow. More news on our website, myjoinline.com forward slash business.